and more time continuous with operations. The second course is the inner service course with five days of training in greater operations. Finally, the last course, the Air Force Uniques, is nine days long. The students train on multi-purpose sweeper operations, water trucks, fencing, and material handling. Each student receives 18 CCAF credits upon graduation, which are applied toward an associate of applied science and construction technology. Today, these Airmen graduate and earn the right to wear the civil engineer occupational badge. Airman Pugh, the class leader, will recite the badges for all its significance. The gear wheel and compass has been used historically to represent engineering profession, both in the military and the private sector. The gear represents the essence of engineering applying scientific principles and technology to practical ends. The gear symbolizes an element representing the built environment that meshes with weapons systems and trained personnel to enable the Air Force to perform its mission. The compass is a precision tool historically used by all engineers in designing and constructing facilities and equipment. The gear and compass together symbolize all the diverse special specialties within the Air Force of Engineers. Finally, the wings help to portray the fundamental linkage between the engineering co components and that the built environment provided by Air Force Civil Engineers is a foundation supporting the Air Force missions and people. Thank you, Amber Pugh. It is time to welcome these students into our civil engineer family with the presentation of the Sloanists. Class 2230, prepare to graduate. Host. Amber Basic Garcia, 354 Civil Engineer Squadron, Isleson Air Force Base, Alaska. First Class Gonzalez, 155th Civil Engineer Squadron, Lincoln Air National Guard Base, Nebraska. <laughs> Amber Basic Hancock, 354 Civil Engineer Squadron, Allison Air Force Base, Alaska. Red Horse Squadron, Mount from Air Force Base, Montana. Yeah! Amber <laughs> 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 Basic Perkins, 354 Civil Engineer Squadron, Isleson Air Force Base, Alaska. Yeah! Class Pew, 556 Red Horse Squadron, Herbert Field, Air Force Base, Florida. Cameron Basic Posado, 556 Red Horse Squadron, Herbert Field, Air Force Base, Florida. Civil Engineer Squadron, Parksdale Air Force Base, Louisiana. Cameron <laughs> Basic Tempo, 35th Civil Engineer Squadron, Asawa, Japan. Squadron Detachment 1, Middle Air National Guard, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Amber Basic Westro, 354 Civil Dam Squadron, Isleson Air Force Base, Alaska.
composer. Let's give a round of applause to our nearest dirt boys. Selection criteria apply to the whole Airman person concept, given the flexibility to weigh performance and academic achievement against other qualities. For example, we consider overall professional attributes such as leadership and followership, conduct, bearing, behavior, attitude, oral and written communication skills, problem solving abilities, adaptability, and faculty and staff recommendations. We would like to recognize those students who have excelled throughout the course and have earned the Academic Achievement Award. To qualify for this award, the student must maintain a 91% average have no academic failures, and have no disciplinary problems. The Academic Achievement Award goes to Airman First Class Samba. Yeah. We would like to recognize one student who has excelled throughout the course and has earned a Distinguished Graduate Award. To qualify for this award, the student must maintain a 95% or higher GPA, have no academic failures, have no disciplinary problems. The Distinguished Graduate Award goes to Airman First Class Gonzalez. Next, we would like to recognize the following individuals who have earned the next rank. When I call your name, please stand to be recognized. Being promoted to the rank of Amherst First Class, Amherst Basic Rosado. I will now turn the floor over to Lieutenant Colonel Carlson for the words of inspiration. All right, good afternoon, and thank you for everybody who's in attendance today. Peyton, thank you for coming. Uh, it's especially important to have family members and loved ones uh, here showing support because, as we all know, whether it be a four-year, maybe a six-year enlistment, a 20-year, or even 30-year career, the time in the Air Force is going to end. But the one thing that remains constant is the, uh, the love and support of our, our family members. So thank you so much for ma making your way here to, to show your support for, uh, for your fiancé. Hopefully, uh, may happy years together in your Air Force adventure. Now to our graduates. Uh, well, congratulations, you made it through tech school. And uh, especially to our academic award winners and our DGs. Fantastic work. I know it's been, it's been a bit of a grind, probably, for these last few months. And I think that you all were one of the first classes that came in about the same time I did. So I got here at the beginning of July. So I remember um, a lot of faces from my first couple of weeks. And it's great to finally start seeing every single class coming through uh, under, under my tenure and the Chief's tenure as well. Uh, but because of graduation today, it doesn't mean that it's the end. It's only the beginning. Your Air Force career will take some places you probably would have never imagined. But as you have that foundational knowledge set from here at tech school, the Air Force is going to expect you to continue to learn. You're going to have CDCs to work on, career development courses. Get opportunities for CCAF, for uh, Community College of the Air Force degree, bachelor degree, potentially master's or even PhDs. But one day, you might be the one standing in front of here or, or sitting in, uh, in the chief's shoes. And the only way to get there is to continue to learn. Never pass up the opportunity to excel. Never pass up an opportunity to learn something new. Because that's what we're going to need to do as an Air Force. We need to be a learning organization to adapt and change to resource constraints, threats from across the, across the world. Uh, we don't know what China or Russia may do, uh, but we need to be agile, we need to be uh, informed, we need to know how to do our jobs in order to rise to the occasion and do what the Air Force is going to expect us to do. And as you go back to your, uh, your installations and you go on to your first duty assignments, uh, never forget that you need to bloom where you're planning. So even if it might not be the job that you want to be in at the time, just do the best you can in that job. That's all the you're going to expect. So with the, the opportunities for appointments, home station work that you will be expected to do, and potential for 
even humanitarian missions, uh, just take all that in, never pass up an opportunity. I look forward to serving beside each and every one of you going forward. I hope our paths will cross. And best of luck in your next assignments. <clears throat>